Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic begins as many role-playing games do, with a character creator. You pick a class, set some stats, skills, and choose from a number of pre-generated models. Then you decide on a name. It can be either entirely custom or pulled from a very good random generator. Knights of the Old Republic's protagonist is yours. Or so you think. The Jedi tell a tale. Darth Revan, the fallen Jedi responsible for kicking off war between the Republic and the newly formed Sith Empire, was betrayed and killed by his underling, Darth Malak, in the midst of a Jedi strike force attacking Revan's capital ship. A relatively short amount of time later, the events of KOTOR transpire. The character you create begins the game awakening to the Sith Empire attacking the Republic battle cruiser they're aboard. Trask Olgo, which is a very good Star Wars name, speaks to your character in the way typical of early 2000s tutorialization. They also answer a few basic questions about the situation aboard the Endar Spire. Whether you choose to be a soldier, scoundrel, or scout, you work for the Republic. And right now, you've got to get to the Jedi Bastila and then escape the soon-to-be-doomed ship. What spins out from there is a 30-hour journey across the Star Wars universe, roughly 4,000 years before A New Hope. It's filled with what you would expect from a Bioware title. You travel across the galaxy to a number of locales solving planetary problems, all in order to solve a galactic problem. There are companions to befriend and romance. Chiefly, there are tons of dialogue choices, some of which branch the story in different directions. There's the iconic Bioware morality meter keeping track of your moral choices. You are the player, and you are in control of this story. Or so you think. Okay, so I'm about to say something that maybe makes some of you turn off this video. Don't. Give me a second to explain here. So, spoiler warnings for pretty much the entirety of Knights of the Old Republic. But it's like a two decade old game. You've had your chance. The remake probably isn't gonna ever happen. And let's be real, the statistics say even if you sit down this very day and boot up KOTOR, you're probably not gonna finish it. So just hear me out. Because a lot of the time, it's only when I hear a game's mechanics and story spoiled that I become really interested in engaging with it myself. After escaping the initial planet of Taris with Bastila and a number of new spacefaring pals, the player character arrives upon Dantooine, and is brought before the Jedi Council there to discuss the possibility of becoming a Jedi. Obviously, it's a Star Wars RPG, safe bet is you're gonna be a Jedi. After some aquatic judicial fun, a little bit of hanging out with the Wookiees, and of course, Tatooine, the protagonist, Bastila, and Karth are captured by the Sith, in a revelation so clearly styled as an attempt to recapture the shock of the Empire Strikes Back big parental reveal, Malik sheds some light on all those weird visions the protagonist has been having throughout the game. The reason the player character has been dreaming about Bastila fighting Revan, and Revan's fall to the dark side, is because you are Darth Revan. Not you, you, like, you the player character. I probably could have been a little more clear there. This revelation is met with all sorts of flashbacks to the breadcrumbs the story left along the way, culminating in an unsettling betrayal. You are not who you believe yourself to be. You are in fact a tool of the Jedi, who did not kill you, but instead took your near dead body wiped your mind of all memories as best they could, implanted a new identity, and then turned you towards their enemy like a heat-seeking missile. Your agency has been a lie. Bioware themselves have also lied. You didn't create a character of your own, you created your version of Revan twisted by a Jedi plot. As you're going through that character creation tool, the Jedi Hand is also there narratively speaking. They're the ones in-universe deciding whether the character is a soldier or whatever. Your agency has, from the jump, been limited and controlled. The incredibly clever thing here is it all seems so typical of the genre and medium. In Alex Kane's boss fight books novel, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, 
James Olin, the lead designer, while discussing Bioware's choice not to set the game during the prequels, states, Our timeline would definitely have to be dictated by the movie and the kinds of stories we like to tell at Bioware are epic in scope. Where the player is the hero who's defeating the big bad, the evil that is threatening the land or the universe or the galaxy. And if it were an Attack of the Clones tie-in, the players would not be the heroes of the galaxy. I think it's safe to assume that Bioware would not have been forced to do some cheap tie-in. If that was LucasArts' intention, then from the get-go, they would not have given Bioware the choice. Throughout the book, it's pretty clear that Bioware has a lot of creative freedom, and not just because of the setting they chose. As much as I can sympathize with Olin's desire, I do wonder what could have been. Creating a Bioware-styled RPG, where agency is such a key design pillar and theme, something beautifully tragic could have been made within the limits of a story where no matter what, practically everyone you know and the galaxy as you understood it would be destroyed by Anakin Skywalker and a bunch of enslaved soldiers that your supposedly well-to-do monastic order of peacekeepers were oddly chill with owning. What could have been said about the subject of agency in a story where you truly are robbed of it in the end? But of course in the end, this is just an entirely different game and probably a more complicated narrative to work out, especially alongside an ongoing series of films. So it's not terribly surprising that Bioware opted to have more agency in what they got to create. Now, Bioware would go on to explore the limitations of agency in their future work. In Mass Effect, who Shepard can be determines the potential solutions to the plethora of problems faced throughout the trilogy. And at the end of the day, they're always going to be a career military soldier who signed up for the space CIA. Then there is my favorite, Dragon Age 2, a game in which even as Hawk ascends in influence and power within Kirkwall, their personal life as well as the whims of history crash in around them. Any Bioware game, despite what marketing or fan discussion may suggest, is highly controlled. No matter your origin and Dragon Age origins, the protagonist's life is magnetized to the fate of becoming a Grey Warden and fighting the Darkspawn. Even in the original Baldur's Gate, you can only stray so far from the story of being a ball spawn. I'm never gonna be able to not laugh at the implications of that name. It, it, it's a ball spawn. That's... Really? Really? Anyway... You're always destined to face your half-brother in that game. All of this is Bioware teaching the player a core reality of their design philosophy, a truth we cannot escape and should not look away from. Because when you recognize these limitations, that's when you can dive into some of the more interesting design aspects. For example, that no matter how we attempt to define our digital beings, we like those caught up in the conflict between the ideologies of the Jedi and Sith, will be defined by the possibility space designed and laid out before us by its creators. Okay, um, yeah, this is not the Baldur's Gate video I have been working on since a while ago, uh, but it is a video that intersects with it. That Baldur's Gate video is coming eventually. The truth is, it's probably um, my own silly fault for making a very large video that was very intensive, lots of details and research. I probably shouldn't have done that. A little bit of uh, feature creep there. I'm committed to finishing it now. Uh, other videos of that specific style about other Bioware games probably a ways off uh i wouldn't say future videos will be like this where it's particularly short but something more in the let's say 15 to 30 maybe 45 minute range and less on the hour and a half range uh with just a lot of intensive video editing stuff going on what I'm trying to say is I, I want to make videos after this 
Baldur's Gate video uh, a little more simple because this is not my full-time job and it is very time-consuming to do video editing and even just play all the games I need to play and write about them. It's a long process. Hence why the video has uh, been in the works for like half a year almost. Uh, more than, no, more than half a year. Um, yeah. So until then, you can always follow me on Twitter, where as long as that site still exists, I, I think it's technically fully x.com now. What a truly terrible name. Uh, but I'm at words maybe whenever that site actually works for me and isn't just like randomly banning me with no explanation and then just unbanning me and not giving me an explanation for that either. I'm rambling here, um, partly to extend the length of this video for the sake of the YouTube algorithms, I guess. Um, we'll just go with that, not because I can't shut the hell up. <laughs>